Yeah, all right. Okay. Um, as I did last time, I've got a few slides just to kind of help us uh, structure the agenda. So I'm going to um, share those with you. Um, hopefully you can all see those slides now. Um, shout if you can't. Um, so um, as I said in the, in the agenda for this call, um, I want to focus on um, uh, looking at the other properties uh, or, or ways that we need to describe, might need to describe events. Um, but I got a few just kind of general updates uh, on some of the latest spec changes and open discussions. Um, so uh, I think I'm just going to jump straight into that so we can make the most of the, the time we've got together today. Um, so as just as my um, general update, um, so where we are in the specification, um, hopefully you all have seen um, the latest uh, latest draft and I've had some um, detailed feedback from um, Sport England so far. Um, so the latest revision um, incorporated a uh, schema diagram. I've redrafted um, a couple of the sections, um, expanded the concept section to add some notes around organizers and the what we're currently calling the activity opportunities, which was the, the concept um, that uh, Andy uh, raised as being important for some types of activity. Um, I expanded the data model section, although there's more work to be done there, um, and wrote a section on kind of future extension to the specification. So we had a bit more of an understanding about how this could evolve in future. Um, for the next revision, um, I'm going to take the, the feedback that I've had um, on the list so far um, and the input I get from you all today on this call. Uh, to create a, uh, another revision for circulation to the list. Um, the, the bits that I'm expecting that uh, will go in, the kind of the major new sections will be the event property stuff, which we're gonna discuss today, and also um, a bit more detail on um, recurrence rules um, for capturing schedules. I also wanna start putting in some uh, conformance criteria, so um, identifying which properties we recommend people always try and include um, when they're sharing this data so that we can nudge people towards sharing the most useful information. Um, we can start to build that into some of the validation tools as well. Um, and I also want to include more examples. Um, I'm gonna put some more examples in the specification, but also put them up on GitHub, um, drawing on, um, uh, for example, some of the activity lists that have been shared on list already uh, and some of the other examples from um, from that, both the ODI research and the um, the open data that people are already starting to publish through the, the real-time page in spec. Um, so it feels to me at least like we're in um, a pretty good shape with the, the, the core model, but um, we obviously need to think about how to make sure that that is useful for people actually publishing data. Um, and so I've got two other things on my kind of list of uh, list of tasks. Um, uh, I'm, I'm considering um, publishing, uh, creating a separate spec that focuses more on the mechanics of actually publishing the data. So ways to structure this data as JSON-LD, as CSV, um, and other formats. Um, that doesn't have to be a separate spec. It could be um, just an extra section or a few sections in the in the spec we've been working on so far so i'd like to get some feedback from you whether you think having a separate spec on just those kind of technical details would of the publishing would be useful um and i'm also planning to do a revision to the the paging specification that people have started to use already um to direct them towards the um the data model so that people start to use uh, so people who are using that spec will start to publish the data in a more um, consistent way. Um, so I think um, with, with those tasks done, um, which I uh, aim to, um, again, get uh, revisions done by in the next week or so, or the end of next week, um, I think we're in a position then when we can start to really focus in on getting some implementation feedback. Um, I think we'll have a, a reasonably good basis for people to actually start um, attempting to publish data using the spec. Um, I think it will be at the point when people try to use it that we'll get um, more detailed feedback. So I'm, I'm kind of keen to get to that point as quick as possible and then iterate further from there. 
Um, so that's where we are on the spec so far. Um, the, we've got a couple of open discussions. Um, so we've been discussing activity lists for a while now. Um, we've had uh, another couple of being shared to the mailing list recently. Um, so I'm going to be using those to just create some examples. So I'm just going to take all of the existing lists we have um, uh, and then put them up in GitHub um, in a way that's consistent with the uh, modeling opportunity data specification so we can all see how it looks in practice and we can use those as um, the basis for further guidance around publishing. Um, so I think that's that kind of uh, a pretty good spot. Um, there's discussion on GitHub and um, on, in schema.org project around recurrence rules for scheduled events. Um, I've got a proposal that I'll share with the list um, later today uh, around that so we can dig into that in a bit more detail. Um, and I, I, when I circulated the spec um, uh, recently, I, I did uh, ask for people to um, start looking at it from an implementation point of view. So I'm going to kind of Kind of re want to reiterate that to everyone it would be useful to know how well that this model is work working with your data or system at the moment um whether you're either publishing or um consuming data you know are there, are there key things that um you can't represent that you think are important for your use cases um so that's um that's where we are um for the kind of specification work i'm just gonna um pause there for a minute and just see whether anyone has any um, feedback or questions or comments on that so far. No. Um, is there anything that anyone wants to put onto the AOB for the end of the discussion um, that you want to kind of bring to the group today? Uh, Lee, just Nick here. Um, can we schedule, kind of talk a bit of a few things around the housekeeping stuff? Um, I mean, particularly just trying to find, I still find it quite hard to find sort of stuff on the website. And it might be stuff that we just need to think about that. To, to, you know, if you look on the, the current open active websites of where we are with the kind of main document, it's not very clear in terms of where that, where that is. And I think Sally's got some ideas the other thing was just the other housekeeping stuff is can we get into more of a schedule of meetings or start to think about that and and i know we're meeting on monday today i don't think mondays is the best day for a lot of people because a lot of people have pre-scheduled in kind of management meetings tend to be on mondays so that might reflect the reason why we've got less people here today yeah okay okay i'll make a note of those we'll come back to those at the end um is there anything else that anyone wants to raise um uh, any feedback on the specification that you haven't had opportunity to provide yet, but you want to discuss now? Ben, yep. you have a question about um, about timescales for lists. Uh, yes, um, I think that was mentioned already that that's part of this discussion about um, a, a draft activity list, is that right? So I'm going to publish what lists we've been provided so far as um, in, in a kind of consistent way using the model um, in terms of getting everybody to agree on which one of those lists or how they will be brought together. I haven't got a, a time scale around that. Which, is, is it the latter bit that you're, you're most interested in? Um, yeah, in terms of having something that um, we can start using, um, that's uh, yeah, sort of a, an activity list which is um, hierarchical and will help uh, users search for um, what they're looking for. Okay. That, that's something I'm keen to start testing out um, fairly soon. Okay, so would having the existing lists in a consistent format help you move that on? Um, or are you more interested in getting into a discussion around what should be in the lists? Um, I sorry, so, so that, ask that again. I didn't catch that question. 
So are you just looking to, to get the, the existing list in a structured format or, or you, do you want to get into a discussion around what the contents of those lists should look like? Um, it's more um, just a structured list. Um, I'm particularly interested in sort of having something that's um, yeah, got sort of, um, sort of broader categories, e.g. football and then subcategories, e.g. five aside. And um, it, that, um, you know, for instance, at the moment, we've got a situation with Get Active where you could search for football and um, not find five aside because it's not, we're not using a hierarchical list. And I'd be keen to start testing out something which has sort of parent-child uh, relationships between um, sports and um, subcategories of sports. You know, for instance, um, judo being um, you know a, a child of martial arts. And I think there is maybe some discussion to be had about how that all fits together. But um, perhaps we've already got a lot of that information from the list we have already. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, um, I think that the, the first step is then is to get the existing lists into a in consistent format. Um, and then um, I think that, that they'll need to, we'll need to take a view on which, which list is the most comprehensive. Um, I'm open for just suggestions on the best way to approach that, whether it's reviewing the detail of the list or um, trying it out, um, trying out the different lists for different uh, different applications or different use cases. Sure. Does anyone have any strong opinions on the best way to approach that? Hi, Lee. I think the, I would have thought the, the main thing is to get one other list or you know combination. Make sure we haven't missed any activities off it. But what we're trying to do is strip it down to its basics. So, uh, you know, like Ben was saying, let's let's go down to judo, karate, have them all there first, then have a look at it. Then you start building, then you can start building all this other stuff, whether it's tags or whatever you want to do it on top of that. But get it down to that basic list that strips out um, a lot of that kind of, some of them still have those program information or age things in them, just get that basic list done. Yeah, because I think for me, it's remembering that this is about what a consumer is looking for. Um, so the mo mo more granular we can have it with as many different variants of the activity, um, I think that's better for now, at which then, like you said, over time, you'll learn how consumers actually do search for physical activity opportunities. Yeah. And we can evolve the list to meet that need. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. Um, anything else that um, you want to raise now? On on that one on the lists, I think um, another good exercise might be to just check the list that we have and across each, which activities are common to those, um, so that we kind of um, effectively consolidate so so if, if we've got four lists right now and judo is on all four then maybe we use judo in the in the in the list that we we have to start with or something like that so it's kind of based on consensus because we've got quite comprehensive lists um and then just a suggested approach maybe we um start with the kind of commonalities between all the lists and then we build up from there so um rather than debating about whether the fives is or is not a sport maybe it's just that fives didn't feature in all four lists and therefore it hasn't been included in the core set uh, as a criteria which is a bit more um uh, uh i suppose it, it's 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 easier to kind of defend in terms of the way that the standard's been created or something i don't know um because otherwise, I, I just wonder whether we're going to get into quite a lot of small discussions around the inclusion of different things early rather than just getting something that works for the majority of cases. Yeah. Yeah, need, yeah sorry, I was just going to say that, um, you know, I also have the, have the, have the same sort of uh, 
thoughts there is Nick uh, in terms of um, when you when you start looking at fitness classes and things like that it 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 can almost seem like every week there is a there's a new type of fitness class um, so you know I think that we should we should certainly start with the ones that are well known and are used in multiple places before we you know try to, to uh, you know try to factor in everything really okay okay yeah i mean i, th I think doing some analysis on the list of shared to identify commonalities is a, is a good idea and i definitely want to read, and for the purposes of defining a way to publish and share these lists i think we, we do want to avoid getting into discussions about the kind of nitty-gritty detail of um you know all of the variations where uh, that people will have um so so let's continue with my the current plan to kind of get them all shared in a consistent way i'll look to see if there's ways to identify the overlaps better um uh, and we'll see where that gets to us as a first pass um okay right um i think i'm gonna move on to the the next bit of the discussion um which is around describing events um let me just share my screen again Okay, so there were, um, I wanted to try and focus the, most of the discussion this time on um, some of the additional event properties. So the relevant bits of the specification, if you want them to at hand, is sections 3.3, which is in the concept section, and then 4.3.2, which is um, in the, around the data model, so some specifically around additional properties and descriptive elements of um, events. Um, so what we've got so far in the in the specification, um, we can describe the activity or activities that are uh, taking place at particular events. We can we can describe the location it's taking place, and we can describe the time that they're going to take place. Um, so we've got the core event model there. So what I'm interested in now is what additional, inf additional structured information um, do we need to capture? Uh, and I'm emphasizing structured there because we can already attach you know, a descriptive bit of text. So somebody can just, you know, just uh, write a paragraph or two and attach that to the event description already. So it's just thinking about other structured ways to describe events that might be useful to drive discovery interfaces. So um, I circulated a, a, a few questions to the list recently, which we can perhaps uh, dig into in a minute, but it's just identifying what properties might be most relevant uh, when people are searching for events or looking for um, descriptions of events. So that might identify some additional properties that we want to include in the specification. Uh, and then potentially um, uh, for those, whether we want to have a consistent set of terminology, so the values of those properties. Um, so the, based on the research that the ODI did um, and some feedback that we've had in some of the discussions that have touched on this already, I've kind of loosely categorized the types of additional information that get associated with um, these type of opportunities. Um, so this, I, I stress this is a, a loose categorization just as a way to help guide the discussion of some of the thinking. This isn't necessarily a recommendation for a specific set of properties or even that all of these things need to go into the spec. It's just, I just wanted to share uh, what has been um, uncovered so far. So there are restrictions, uh, which, you know, uh, the, an event is suitable for a particular gender, age ranges, heights and weights. The suitability of an event for a particular audience, which is often seems to be around age ranges again, fitness levels. There might be prerequisites, so things that you need to have done or things that you need to bring as part of uh, taking part in the event. Um, and then there are so the last four categorization, purpose, structure, sorry, the, last, the next three rather. The categorization, purpose, structure are more loose, looser ways to help describe events. So the kind of intensity, um, some notion of, uh, again, um, sort of how, what the entry level is, um, whether um, the purpose of the event is training or competition or whether it's just a more kind of fun event. Um, 
and kind of related to that a kind of structure whether it's a kind of more formally defined thing or just an, uh, an informal activity that people turn up to um, and then the last one is a, a booking uh, so price being the obvious one um, and I'm, there's, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a whole slew of additional information relating to that booking category um, and my kind of initial thinking is that those probably should be deferred when we get into booking in a bit more detail rather than trying to do a partial job of it now but those are the um, those are the types of things um, that we've identified um, so we need to work out uh, whether we want to get into um, specifying some more of these now um, for the first version of the specification um, or whether we think just the existing uh, properties so time activity location and textual description is enough to get people started so in terms of where we go from here and, to, and thinking about what the outcome of our discussion should be I think we've got three options so first is just to capture some of those these requirements as things that we want to dig into but uh, don't get into uh, don't add them to the specification right now so we just focus on um, helping people publish that key information about events um, and defer uh, additional kind of spec work, whether it's around identifying the properties, identifying common vocabulary to a later version of the specification. Second option is we are able to identify some common properties that are used in a majority of the systems or different types of event and we think are pretty critical to help describe the discovery type use cases um, and we make sure that those go into the first version of the spec um, uh, and the way that we can approach that is just by defining the properties and not necessarily getting into uh, having a uh, recommendations on um, what uh, an age range should look like or what the different types of um, uh, intensity levels are for a session and we leave it up to people to just publish whatever they have but in a consistent way uh, and then the third option is to identify those properties and also try and get some uh, agreement around um, standard ways to describe those things um, so I just kind of want to keep that in mind as we're doing the discussion on so we can get a sense of whether we want to be going you know how for how in how much detail we want to get into for the early discussion um, you know, do we want to be just focusing on where we're at now and defer or do we want to get into into more details um, so that that's my kind of um, uh, scene setting um, and I just want to kind of throw uh, throw that out to each of you to see what what you think in terms of um, uh, which option we should be looking at and then then which properties you if you think might be most useful for us to focus on um, I've got a, a suggested way forward, but I'd, I'd sooner hear from you all rather than um, telling you what I, what I think we should do. Um, so, um, Nick, Sport England, you'd already um, provided some feedback on this on the list. I'm just wondering whether you want to kick things off. So, what do you think? No, I mean, I just put down some basics, sort of the typical questions that could be asked, you know, of, of you know, and it's probably this again, it's useful whether, you know, what operators have around this area, or do they have any common sort of information that they would normally publish around um, some of the classes and other things they put on. Um, I mean, one of the things I think is quite important here is probably more around the, particularly the kicking things off, is the free text idea that, you know, people provide me a free text field because actually, if they don't have other information, that is really tagged in any kind of database format in terms of the age sex. It's the kind of stuff they could just put into the free text. And, the, and I suppose part of this thing is, you know, it, it's the, the bit that we're trying to push forward and get the better, we want to publish stuff, more stuff, which is great, but we also, it's part of the education piece. So, you know, it's getting people to start to think about these things as much as the publication. Okay, thanks. Um... Somebody else want to pick up from there? Andy? Yeah. Uh, um, I, I was, I, I've seen obviously Nick's um, response and um, some of your response to that. 
Um, I felt very comfortable with the general discussion there and um, very much from um, as a, a sports partnership promoting physical activity through other people. Um, we're very keen on the, the element of making these, the activities discoverable and particularly by people who would be looking for new activities or new routes into getting themselves active. Um, and so I think there are, uh, in terms of your three options, um, I've, my sense is that um, I, somewhere in the middle, um, probably option two, um, that we do need to have some basic uh, categories that would be the things that we know people will need to uh, have available in a, a, a very readily searched way so that we can um, uh, make things more discoverable for people and that there are a few key categories where we might or within that want to go lower particularly for, for us it would be areas like the activity um, intensity um, specification and making that starting to standard or I use this as an exercise as Nick was suggesting to promote a standard way of actually presenting that that's also consistent with partners like public health and, uh, and those people messaging from a different place so things like the the, the in units of 10 minutes the level of moderate activity those kinds of things how how do we want to do that but in a way that's actually effective um, the the only other thing and i will share um after this meeting a link to a um a very crude tool that was developed with public health down here in devon um, it's only a prototype, but it was uh, an instrument called uh, Get Active Devon. And it um, has the, it, it sort of starts to look at those, how do you help make it discoverable? Well, it's very similar sorts of principles to what I'm in, um, but it might throw up some other categories, like, you know, our, we're, we're sort of approaching from the point of view of the, the participant not really knowing what it is they want to do. And you might be sitting with a doctor or a nurse, whoever it might be, and simple questions like, are you looking for something that's outdoor or indoor? Are you looking for something that's group or individual? Those kinds of levels. And then you discover actually, well, there's this range of um, activities you might want to consider and then start getting down to actually discovering what's available on your doorstep amongst those. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, it does. Thank you. Um, Raymond, um, do you have any thoughts on... Um on which properties you're kind of capturing or what would be useful to share? Um, okay, so um, for us, most of this sort of information tends to be free format at the moment. Um, however, um, I do think that we do need to standardize some of it. Um, so um, I, would, I would probably go for a middle of the road approach as well. Um, in terms of um, future proofing it I would probably advocate some way of us having a category or a tag type that can then be a free text so um, and just to give an example uh, if we went ahead and set and set um, you know, standard codes for you to have age range gender all that sort of stuff you know those I think are fairly easy to do but once you start getting down into um, the into the actual um, into the actual prerequisites uh, it might be that that for now we just create one standard prerequisite, which is a free text one. Um, and in the future, we can then look to have um, standard, you know, standard, um, you know, well-known things like, for example, ASA, you know, gradings or, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, <clears throat> but I will say for now, everything on this that we would have would be free text, uh, but we would like to, have some form of standard way for us to for us to capture this. Okay, that's that's interesting. Thank you. Yeah, I think one of the things we need to balance up is how much are we it is making sure that people have a way to share the data they have while also encouraging, I guess, a more structured and more common approach. But the the latter requires more changes to the way people are currently capturing things. So there's kind of a whole bunch of system and architectural changes. I would guess that are going to follow some of that. Um, yes, I mean, um, you know, just to just to go a little bit further. I mean, uh, once we once we reach the point where we have got these these sorts of things standardised, um, 
yes, it'll be a, a slow process and we'll need to pull, a, you know, pull some of the marketplace with us. But, um, <clears throat> you know, certainly I could see, you know, I could see some of the, some of the software providers uh, making fairly quick changes to their applications, you know, for them to just have, you know, lists uh, or, you know, for you to have some form of uh, translation mechanism for them to change uh, where they would have lookup codes and things like that just to, you know, match into, you know, to what we have actually outlined here to be standard codes. Um, the, the first one which actually springs to mind there for me is, um, is, is things like age ranges, for example. We have, we have a, a, a lookup table already um, for you to specify age ranges, uh, but they may not match the actual age ranges which we, which we are going to flesh out here. So, you know, some mechanism may be needed there for us to, you know, to uh, switch between one value to the other. <clears throat> But I don't see that as as being a massive showstopper. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Right. Um, ben, from the kind of data that Eidman have been working with, are you seeing a kind of a consistent set of descriptive properties? What we find is that when we um, sort of get access to some new data it doesn't often have um, all of the kind of things that a user would want to know that users tell us that they need to know to make a decision on whether to go to something or not. Um, it's not always um, sort of designed to be taken out of context as well. Um, so it kind of assumes, um, I mean, yes, yeah, sometimes it doesn't make any sense at all um, outside of a original context, or sometimes it makes, um, you know, slightly less sense to, to somebody who's, um, yeah, sort of doesn't know where it actually originated from, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm sort of in favour for kind of um, more standardisation, more in the way of standardisation um, and kind of a free text is useful, but um, Kind of can, you know, there's an opportunity for users to be able to fil uh, filter their searches and, and narrow down searches with thousands of activities just to the ones that they care about. And free text kind of um, wouldn't allow that sort of filtering. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, Lee, I mean, Lee, if you look to that list, or the list, you know, just our potential areas, you can see that some are, some are pretty obvious. That because they're numerical or, or could be, there's no real choices. So if you looked at them, you're pretty much saying that you could define, you know, age, sex, the height and weight one, if that was one, the price, and all the rest of them, you kind of leave them at the moment. They're the ones you can't really easily define. Um, but those ones, you can certainly, you know, move, move away from having free text. Yeah. Um... Well, so on the age, the age range one's interesting, um, if only because I've been, I've been doing some work at the ONS recently, and they have many different ways of expressing age ranges, um, because they tend to group things into brackets, rather than specifying just an arbitrary uh, minimum or maximum age. So it'd be useful to know whether, um, you know, are, are there kind of broad, you know, broad age ranges, or would a minimum maximum actually be just enough for people? The only thing I would say, why, why I've gone or suggested a min max is, is simply from knowing how, for example, a lot of the governing bodies organise their sports and quite a lot of them, they vary. You know, you can't, if you go to one sport and say, what's your juniors? They'll say it's between this age and this age. In another sport, it will be something different. And then football then change, you know, suddenly they've moved to, right, everything is now, priority is now under nines. So because there's such variation, I think you're very, and across different sports and activities, I think you find it very hard to come up with a standardized kind of range sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. So the, um, uh, in the spec at the moment, um, I referenced, there's a schema.org property for events, uh, which is typical age range. Um, and they just specify just a, 
things like seven to nine or um, well, 11 or above is the example, but it's 11 dash, you know, that there's no end to the range. So it's a very light kind of formatting for the property, um, but would cut, it sounds like it would cover that, the kind of use case you're describing there. Um, so we could, we could just, just use that for now. That would give us an age range property without having to do a lot uh, of extra work. Um, Okay. Um, sorry, could I, um, I agree in principle with, uh, with Nick in terms of having that small set of clear, uh, consistent criteria that you're, uh, you can define, you know, uh, people are always going to want. Um, the only one I would uh, add to Nick's, which I think is probably buried in the free text at the moment, and whether or not it can be pulled out, is the, uh, the purpose. Um, what I'm thinking of there is a lot of the events we, we um, are engaged with where we look at, say, the inclusion or the health, more close to the health agenda. Um, uh, there are significant factors like whether it's a mental health theme, and that's the purpose, and it might be a closed session around that. Um, or you've got an active mum session where you need to convey information about the child as well as the mum. Um, and so on. So um, there's something specific about the purpose. What, what is the type that the reason that people are doing this session? I want to find sessions that are for that reason too. Um, and um, then definitely needing the free text to be a, an essential element to cover off those other things that you absolutely are going to get straight down into a very complex um, things like the active mums about requirements for the child, um, uh, which you couldn't possibly hope to put into a consistent structure, probably ever, but certainly in the at this stage. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, for are there any existing um, lists of terms that you would use for for capturing the purpose then? Um, so, I mean, certainly we have stuff that uh, very basic things about uh, people help, helping people get active for the first time, um, as opposed to, and you might, for, at the other end of the spectrum, you might have things that are about skill improvement, as opposed to um, uh, competition or, or just basic participation. So I'm sure... I think there would definitely need to be, that, that's why I'm sort of thinking of the middle of the road, that we probably want to at this stage identify that we definitely need a category called purpose, um, but we probably would need to work and not try and attempt to actually standardize the language too much um, at this stage. That would need to sort of evolve out of sharing lists and, and um, data. Okay. I'd be interested to take that a step a step back to the kind of use case there because one of the things that we're finding when we're looking at which data to open up, uh, I think it was Andy, I think it was you that mentioned before around um, maybe it was Nick around the, the intensity level um, and whether it was for beginner or intermediate, um, and so there's definitely a so I, yeah in terms of purpose I, I heard you say then that or oh, maybe this is good for someone who's new to the sport and the purpose is to introduce them. Um, there's almost a pathway emerging with the data, set that's, data sets that are available. For example, in rowing, um, learn to row sessions are for beginners to get to understand how to use to actually row. And then when you get in the boat, then you're in a club session and you don't just turn up to a club session without learning to row first. Um, so the pathway is you do the beginners, learn to row, then you go to the club session. Um, and so that, that and, and within all the fusions data, um, in the leisure operator fusion um, they've also got a sense of if it's a beginner or an intermediate session um, for the different classes that they run uh, in the same way so uh, I wonder whether so so purpose sounds really useful um, but I wonder if, it, if, it's, if it, it's quite a few different use cases that that is kind of solving um, and I don't know if, if maybe something around level or something might be something to draw out separately or if there's more debate to be had there Possibly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, perhaps I, uh, oh, sorry, Nick. Um, no, carry on, the, carry on, Abby. Uh, the, the, uh, some other examples might help. So the, we might have 
um, activities that are um, particularly relevant for long-term conditions, people with long-term conditions, cancer survivors, or de dementia or other significant part audiences that we're trying to actually make stuff, relevant stuff, discoverable for. So it, it isn't just as about the intensity. I think the intensity is one that warrants being handled in its own right, really, um, to help use that to help standardise how intensity is actually represented and shared and found. Yeah, all, all I was going to say is some of this is some of this actually overlapping with the program. So in this case, is you'd have a pro the program would be could all be around could be named it could be something around a, you know re cancer rehab or something session or something, and that's where and maybe there's a bit around how that links across to to this and then is there free text around that description with the program to allow them to describe more about what that is because like they're getting to worry again or some of these things those are programs which have specific objectives with descriptors against them yeah okay so the, the current approach to handling uh programs or formats uh is that you can add some descriptive text and links and images so there is a way to capture some of that I mean, you just feel like a few of these things, there is, there's, definitely, there's definitely some overlap. And that's why I think actually trying, trying some, we're getting to the point where we need to try some of this out with real data to see where the patterns are in terms of um, you know, what's useful to kind of tease out into a more structured approach and what is just kind of otherwise transparent from, um, from a combination of different, different properties, descriptive elements. Um, Russ? Sorry, I did, Russ is on the phone. I just wanted to see whether you want to, to jump in. I was, uh, it occurred to me that um, it might be useful to think about various of these uh, around attributes as, as being what, when, where, and who. Um, and uh, obviously, there's a, a lot of discussion at each of these points as to where the boundary between. Um, free form and structured data should lie but it, it seems to me that at a very high level if, if we will always need some kind of free form data but it might be useful if that were separated out into free form data relating to each of the what when where and who or maybe just the what and the who if that makes any sense it does yeah um, and I think the, the what, the when, and the where is kind of covered. Well, I mean, the, the when and the where are, are covered and are more naturally uh, and easily put into a uh, structured form. But the what and the who um, both have separate needs for, uh, for, for more detail. So talking about you know the restrictions and the suitability very much who um, but things like the you know the the, the purpose or going back to your thing for the structure or whatever those are those are still those are about the what um, I don't you know it, it just in terms of, of thinking of, of how people would search and what they would be looking for they they're probably quite aware of uh, it's, it's a different kind of search that people would entertain when they're looking at the things that filter on who they are versus what the activity is yeah okay that's that's what you mean well that was my only real comment okay thank you Right. So, I mean, the, the, so the feedback we've had so far, it feels like that the kind of option two that we need to do, we need to do something more than just focus on, on the, the core event description is required. Um, from the suggestions that we've made so far, it seems like um, one, one approach would be to, as Nick suggests, for things like age, height and weight, um, we just make sure that we've got properties for those and just follow a min max type model for capturing those ranges because they're all like to be numeric uh, values 
Um, but then we have one or more extra properties which are essentially just tags. So we could have a broad category property which allows somebody to just add tags which could cover um, uh, other ways to just describe the events. Um, and we could add something like purpose, which is similar. Um, so both would be free text, um, but it's just clearer that the tags relating to purpose have a bit more of a kind of, of semantics to them. What, what, do, what do people think about that as a kind of just trying to summarize where we got to at the moment? I'm going to take no for <laughs> the only thing uh, that so that there yeah, that sounds really good. Um, the only thing that um, might be helpful on top of that is to have something about when we've got data that doesn't fit one of those, um, uh, one of the predefined categories or tags, or whether it doesn't quite fit. For example, I mean, if gender wasn't in the core set that Nick was talking about, I mean, it is, but let's say it wasn't, then people will still need to, to um, describe their activities in terms of whether it mixed male or female. And so having kind of a, a way which is agreed, which we can use to, I kind of, I, I guess it's just extension points or something, isn't it? So, so we know when um, there's additional data we want to include that there's a way of doing that. Um, and I suppose to be aware that just because we haven't put it in the spec doesn't mean people don't have that data and want to express it. Um, and so we might be missing out on an opportunity to start to see an implementation that covers some of this stuff if we don't include it in the kind of core fields. So maybe it's better to err on the idea, on, on the kind of side of having more stuff in the core fields, but maybe not nailing it down at this point to, to being a mandatory part of the standard or something so that we can start to see people expressing things and challenging that part of the spec and getting into it. Um, because the, the opposite of that might be if we don't have enough stuff in the core, don't have enough core fields that people just bang everything into free text or um, output whatever they've got in the database and, and we lose the opportunity to actually uh, wrestle with those issues potentially yeah yeah I mean that's that's exactly what, what I'm just trying to feel my way towards really it's just if, if there's obvious gaps that everyone's going to be looking looking to fill with extra extra structure that just make sure that we've got something in place for that even if we haven't got it tightly tightly defined uh, and one of the reasons why I added um, the section in the spec, so 4.9, about how the model could be extended or refined is to make sure that we had an answer if somebody said, well, what if, what if you know, for our particular community of users or for our application, how do we provide this extra structure so that we've at least identified how, um, how people go about that. So that section says, you know, anything that is, you know, anything that's in schema.org, you can just use because it's in, it's consistent with the model. So I use the example there of adding reviews. Um, but then there's, there's other kind of more structured ways to kind of go about adding, adding extensions. Um, I, sorry, um, Lee, just a couple of thoughts there about uh, picking up from Nick Evans's points. Um, the two, areas that, that I don't think we have touched on yet really that at some point we will need to um, but I, I'm not suggesting we need to actually address these head-on right at this minute but uh, one is um, the whole area of accessibility or, or um, how that's proactively supported events that proactively support that um, or inclusion around that and then um, the other one is about the, the assurance and accreditation. So if you imagine perhaps a supported service in a, a social prescribing service or something, um, they might actually want to be able to identify from all of these events out here, which ones actually have some sort of quality mark or how do I know that that is something I'm happy signposting this person to? Um, whether that's a, a review based thing or it's actually a formal accreditation thing or otherwise, um, what's the quality assurance mark for what's being posted up here? Um, so um, it, it's very vague, it's just a, a placeholder at the moment, but I think there's probably something we need to think about. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I've, I've made a note of that. Um, yeah, okay. Um, I'm just mindful of the time, so I want to come back to the the, the kind of other other business that people raised. Um, 
So, uh, guys at Sport England, you had some stuff around housekeeping you wanted to share with the group? Yeah, no, that was only, the only couple of points. It was one is, you know, the, the draft, the detailed draft, um, I call it spec, I suppose. You know, that, that you can't actually, well, as far as we can see, you can't actually access that off the, the website or GitHub, or you can't find a link to it. So the only time I can ever access it is work via your emails, you know, showing the work in progress. Um, and the only other one was just really, can we get some kind of more, a bank up of kind of regular meetings in, in place? So we got them in people's diaries. So if we have to cancel them, then that's fine. I think it's just getting it, thinking ahead and getting quite a few in the, in the diaries. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On the, um, the, the schedule, I'll, um, uh, so after, after the call, I'll work, I'll work out a schedule and probably go back to the Wednesday, um, so that we can um, have a real regular catch up. I, I moved this one just because I, I wanted to kind of uh, push forward on this one area a bit quicker. Um, but um, yeah, I'll get some stuff set up in the diary. On the housekeeping side of things, um, the it's it's not linked from the main Open Active website at the moment because I wanted to get it to a point where we had we were broadly happy as a group before kind of circulating it more widely. So there's a process within the community group where we can formally publish our drafts, which will make them appear um, from the community, community group webpage. So I haven't done that because I just wanted to get to a point where we address most, if not all of the issues. So there'll be a process of publication from the community on the W3C site. And I think at that point, then we can also make it sure it gets surfaced at the um, on the open active website um but i think that's most it, it's worth doing that when the the various bits of specification are all uh ready to be used together so i didn't want to be pushing people from the um who are looking to currently open up their data using the page inspect to this if it was um still incomplete um okay so yeah so yeah that's, that's fine that's fine that's fine okay um, but it, that's okay. Um, so the other thing was the activity list. But I think we've discussed that uh, already. Um, but Ben, shout at me if there's anything else that you want to come back to on activity lists. But the, another a kind of question that I wanted to leave the group with, um, or, or ask of you before we disappear, um, is um, is my plan of creating a separate publishing spec that is kind of um, more technical. Uh, does that make sense, or would you sooner just have one self-contained specification that's got everything in it? You know, so it's got more of the the detail of how to publish activity lists as CSV, as JSON, etc., all in one place. Or do you think it's useful to have, break these out into you know a kind of data model document and then um, kind of an implementation guide? I just want to make sure that spec is kind of useful for people who are reading it and applying it. Um, my, you know, my vote there would be to have as few documents as possible for you to get up and running. Uh, however, having just said that, um, well, yes, I would say that we should have one, one full spec, uh, but uh, I certainly see no harm in us having um, a quick start guide, which can which can have deep links into that spec. Um, but, um, you know, I would try and keep as much as we can in one place. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So more of a primer, um, yeah, and tutorial. That would be really useful for the, the implementations I've been um, working with, certainly. Having a, having a quick primer uh, that, that points to the deep, the deeply within the spec, which can be quite, um, uh, if you're just looking at it for the first time, can, uh, be quite difficult to kind of sift through um, but also actually and maybe maybe this is something to put in the spec or maybe it's in the primer, maybe better in the spec um, having good quality examples that really cover the core use cases because I think a lot of developers tend to just jump straight to the examples and kind of work backwards to the rest of the spec um, so if we've got some kind of really clear you know use cases especially from the data already published where for example ledger operators data generally has a certain um, content so let's just put put an example there that really talks to that um, and then something else that talks to a club publishing their sessions 
Yeah, yeah. okay. Lee, the only other thing I would say is I think that when we get, although we're kind of immersed in this, you know, other people and people won't have been as immersed. So in terms of that, having that quick guide, I think is, is useful. But whether it's, um, we have a separate web pages, but I think it's, it's A, picking up as things emerge, bits of good practice, but and, a, and strong uh, examples, as Nick said, is, is important, but also some good, you know, you know, how to around some of this stuff. So, you know, when you're talking about someone who doesn't have that, who particularly won't get into tail, won't have that experience, you know, what is the good practice you should be putting in your free text fields or whatever? What are the things you should be thinking about? There's all that that needs to sit around this, I think. So we, we just need to think about that as well as we develop stuff. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, okay, um, so uh, on the, the, the good quality examples point, so what I've been doing so far is I've been taking uh, the data that's been shared on the list. I've been taking, I've been looking at the data that people are currently starting to publish openly under Open Active. Um, are there other places I should be looking? Um, just, just to make sure that I've got a good kind of coverage of what current practice is. For example, of the people that are publishing data at the moment, uh, are there kind of missing, you know, are there people missing from that that we think we need to make sure are kind of accommodated in terms of showing how their data would look in standard? It might be quite good to pick off some examples of people who are yet to publish, um, kind of in the pipeline, and um, make sure that we've got those covered in advance of them getting to the same problem themselves. Okay, okay, so I'll coordinate with you on that then. Okay, look. Right. Um, it's 12 o'clock, so we're due to wind up now then. Um, so uh, has anybody got anything else they want to raise before I uh, close down the call for today? Nope. Right. Okay, then. Well, um, thanks again for a really good and useful discussion. Um, the feedback is always very appreciated. Um, so yeah, let's keep the discussion going on the list. I'll do some follow up on some of the, the discussion points today so that we can um, get those people who weren't able to make it stay kind of involved in um, shaping up where we go next. So yeah, thanks again for everybody and I'll speak to you all again soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Cheers. Cheers.